Diamantinosaurus. Diamantinosaurus is a genus of titanosaurian sauropod from Australia that lived during the early late Cretaceous, about 94 million years ago. The type species of the genus is Dematilde, first described and named in 2009 by Scott Hocknell and colleagues based on fossil finds in the Winton Formation. Meaning Diamantina lizard, the name is derived from the location of the nearby Diamantina River in the Greek word Soros, lizard. The specific epithet is from the Australian song Waltzing Matilda, also the locality of the holotype and paratype. The known skeleton includes most of the forelimb, shoulder girdle, pelvis, hindlime and ribs of the holotype, and one shoulder bone, a radius and some vertebrae of the paratype. History of Discovery The holotype of Diamandinosaurus was first uncovered over four seasons of excavations near Winton, Queensland, Australia. The bones, found alongside the holotype of Australovenator and Crocodilomorphs and Mollusks. The two dinosaurs found, known from specimens catalogued as OTF 603 and 604 were described in 2009 by Scott Hocknell and his colleagues. Specimen OTF 603 became the basis for the genus Diamantinosaurus, and the species D. Matilde. The species name is a reference to the song Waltzing Matilda, written by Banjo Patterson in Winton, while the generic name is derived from the Diamantina River running nearby the type locality combined with the Greek Soros, meaning lizard. Oath 603, the holotype, includes the right scapula, both humeri, right ulna, both incomplete hands, dorsal ribs and gastralia, partial pelvis, and the right hindlime missing the foot. The paratype, under the same specimen, includes dorsal and sacral vertebrae, the right sternal plate now thought to represent the remainder of a coracoid, a radius, and one manual phalanx. All these bones come from AODL 85, nicknamed the Matilda site at Aldersley Sheep Station, located about 60 kilometers, 37 miles, west-northwest from Winton in central Queensland. This locality is in the upper midsection of the Winton Formation, which dates to the Cenomanian of the late Cretaceous. The discovery of Diamandinosaurus ended a pause in the discovery of new dinosaurs in Australia, as the first sauropod named in over 75 years. Along with Australovenator, Diamantinosaurus has been nicknamed after the Australian song Waltzing Matilda, with Australovenator being called Banjo and Diamantinosaurus being nicknamed Matilda. Wintana Titan, also from the site, was dubbed Clancy. The find was apparently the largest dinosaur discovery in Australia that was documented since that of Mutabarosaurus in 1981. An additional specimen, Oat 836, was described in 2016. It includes portions of the skull, including a left squamuzzle, nearly complete brain case, right serangular, and various fragments. Additionally, the specimen also includes the atlas, axis, five other cervical vertebrae, three dorsal vertebrae, additional dorsal ribs, portions of the hip, and another right scapula. In 2021 the referred material was thoroughly described. Description Diamantinosaurus was relatively small for a titanosaurian, possibly reaching 15 to 16 meters, 49 to 52 feet, in length and 15 to 20 t, 17 to 22 short tons, in weight. Dot some of its relatives are known possessed armor osteoderms although is it unknown whether Diamantinosaurus had these. Like other sauropods, Diamantinosaurus would have been a large quadrupedal herbivore. Since the original description, the only major revisions include the misidentification of the sternal plate, misplacement of manual phalanges 3-1 and 4-1 as 3-1 and V-1 respectively, and the identification of the missing portion of the fibula. The skull of Dimandinosaurus is incompletely known, with only the posterior skull roof and brain case being preserved. Similarly to Saltosaurus and Raptosaurus and unlike Nemunctosaurus, the supertemporal fenestra was bordered by the frontal bone. Contrasting from both latter genera, Diamantinosaurus has a low supraoccipital above the cranial foramen, which is subsequently less than 1.5 times the height of the basal tuberae, which has a foramen. All of these traits are however shared with Saltosaurus. Multiple other traits are found throughout derived titanosaurs, including downward angling of the skull, prong-shaped lateral brain case processes, an undisturbed pituitary fossa, and a more centrally located opening for the internal carotid artery. As is typical for titanosauriforms, all cervical and dorsal vertebrae of Diamandinosaurus are epistocelous and camelate, many small internal chambers. The axis vertebra of the genus is short, a potential characteristic of Saltosauridae. Contrasting Saltosaurus and Rhabdosaurus however, the prezygopophyses of Diamandinosaurus extend in front of the centrum. Only certain in the known middle dorsals, the postspinal lamina, ridge on posterior surface of spine, extends below the spine itself. Like more basal sauropods Europosaurus and Euhelopus, 
The dorsal vertebrae have a notch on the top of the posterior centrum face, giving it a heart-shaped appearance, contrasting more derived Titanosaurus or Giraffe Titan which possess flattened centra. Although differing in centrum shape, Apisocelicaudia and Diamandinosaurus are the only Titanosaurs to share a ventral keel set within a sharply defined depression under the dorsals. Dorsal prezygopophyses are linked to the spine by a spina prezygopophyseal lamina, which is absent in Apisocelicaudia and most dorsals of Raptosaurus, and the postzygodipophyseal lamina found in Diamandinosaurus is also absent in most derived Titanosaurs. There is no indication of a hypospin hypantrum articulation, a diagnostic feature of derived Titanosaurs. Shared with Apisocelicaudia, Alamosaurus and Lyrianosaurus to the exclusion of other Titanosaurs, Dimandinosaurus has a simple undivided ridge between the posterior centrum and dipophysis, posterior centra dipophysial lamina. A poorly preserved feature between the prezygopophysis and centrum may be the posterior centra prezygopophysial lamina, found in some brachiosaurids, basal Titanosaurs, and Apisocelicaudia. Diamantinosaurus possessed at least five, possibly six, sacral vertebrae. Forelimb. Almost all the right forelimb is known from Diamandinosaurus, although the left humerus is known in addition to the right, and the left first metacarpal is known while the right isn't preserved. Diagnostic of Diamandinosaurus, the glenoid, humerus, articulation of the scapula is rotated to the outside, differing from all other sumphospondylans. Similar to Alamosaurus and taxa around the base of Titanosauria, at least a single ventral process is known. Although it is poorly preserved, dot the scapula of Dimandinosaurus is robust, having a more round cross-section than other sumphospondylans. The coracoid, misidentified as external in the original description, is plain and unfeatured, contrasting Huabesaurus, Lyrianosaurus, and Apisocelicaudia. The proximal surface of the 1.068 meters (3.50 feet) humerus is prominently curved, as in the derived Titanosaurs Apisocelicaudia and Saltosaurus. The lateral corner is also squared, placing it within Sumphospondyli. Like with most Sumphospondylans but unlike Euhalopus and Raptosaurus, Diamandinosaurus has a middle shifted delta pectoral crest. Ridges for muscle attachment are less developed than in Apisocelicaudia and Magyarosaurus. Differing from derived Titanosaurs, the condyles to articulate with the forearm are not pronounced. Diamandinosaurus has an ulna comparing to derived Titanosaurs in the level of robustness, as well as having a very pronounced elecranon. Similarly, the radius of Dimandinosaurus is more robust than all Titanosaurs except Apisocelicaudia. The ulna is 70 cm in, long, while the radius is 67.5 cm in. Because of the completeness of the forelimb material, the absence of carpal bones among the preserved material was presumed by Pora Pat et al. 2014, to be related to their genuine absence in life, as in Apisocelicaudia and Alamosaurus. The manus of Diamandinosaurus comparatively displays some plesiomorphic features, including, the middle metacarpal being the longest, 41.2 cm, 16.2 in, MC3 compared to next longest 37.5 cm, 14.8 in, MC2, the presence of a thumb claw, and the presence of multiple phalanges, having the phalangeal formula to 1111. However, the manus of Diamandinosaurus is completely cylindrical and vertical like other titanosaurs. The presence of large numbers of phalanges in Diamandinosaurus was used by Porapat et al. 2014, to suggest that all titanosaurs actually had ossified phalanges contrasting earlier studies. Following this logic, they suggested that for Apisocelicaudia and Apachthosaurus, which both preserve a single phalanx from the fourth finger, the absence of others was due to them being lost before fossilization for the preceding digits, instead of absence. The complete absence of preserved phalanges in Alamosaurus, Raptosaurus, Nerconsaurus and Saltosaurus potentially being due to disarticulation instead of absence of ossification. Hindlime. The left ilium, left and right pubes, left and right ischia, and entire right leg lacking the foot are preserved for Diamandinosaurus, although some bones are highly fragmented and poorly preserved. The ilium has the outside well preserved, but its size and fragility mean the internal side cannot be seen for anatomical features. The top edge of the ilium is broken, revealing numerous small internal camera, as present in the Titanosaurus Alamosaurus, Apachthosaurus, Lyrianosaurus, Saltosaurus, and Sonidosaurus. Shared with other derived Titanosaurs, the anterior process of the ilium flares to the side and rotates so the vertical ilium body becomes a horizontal shelf. Diamandinosaurus also displays the derived sauropod traits of a rounded ilium, 
reduced articular surface for the ischium, and a protuberance above the ischiatic articulation, only shared with episocelicaudia among titanosauriforms. The pubis, as in advanced sauropods, is a flattened bone, lacking the anterior hook of diplodocoids, but with potentially autopomorphic grooves surrounding the obturator foramen. Articulation with the ischium takes up 46% of the pubic length, as in most macronarians but contrasting with Elamosaurus and Episocelicaudia, where it is reduced. The entire ischium is only 68% of the length of the pubis as in other titanosaurs, and also expands medially so the entire floor of the pelvis is closed. Unlike some titanosaurs, the ischium of Dimandinosaurus displays no constriction of its width, nor a flange projecting internally. Dimandinosaurus also lacks a notable muscle scar for the M flexor tibialis internus 3 on the side of the distal ischium, which is diagnostic for the taxon amongst Neosauropoda. The femur, 1.345 meters, 4.41 feet, long, is roughly twice as wide as it is long, as in other derived sauropods, although it has been slightly crushed. The crushing did not prevent the preservation of the linea intermuscular as cranialis ridge, also present in Saltosaurus, Nerconsaurus, Bonotitan, Rochosaurus, and Alamosaurus. As is typical for a sauropod, the head of the femur is slightly above the greater trochanter, and there is a mild trochanteric shelf. A moderate lateral bulge is present, above which the femur is shifted medially, like most macronarians except Episocelicaudia, Saltosaurus, and Raptosaurus. The condyles for articulation with the tibia and fibula extend high onto the posterior surface of the femur, but unlike Nerconsaurus and Episocelicaudia do not extend onto the anterior surface. A depression subdivides the fibular condyle, which bears a slight ridge also found in Magyarosaurus and other Titanosaurs, although the prominence of it is unique to Diamandinosaurus. The fibular condyle is larger than the tibial, and extends farther down, giving the femur a beveled appearance potentially diagnostic of Saltosauridae but also found in Raptosaurus and the non-Titanosaur Dung Bay Titan. The tibia is 59% of the length of the femur, and as is normal for Neosauropods is wider than it is long on the proximal surface. Diamandinosaurus bears multiple fossae and ridges on the tibia that have not been observed in other sauropods, making them a suite of diagnostic traits. As in many Titanosaurs, the distal end of the tibia is flared to over double the midshaft width although a thin flange along the midshaft may be diagnostic to Diamandinosaurus. Originally reconstructed missing part of the shaft, the fibula is 76.9 cm long, and is intermediately robust, although close to gracile. The bone is poorly preserved, but still displays a diagnostic widening of the fibular muscle scar, and a diagnostic medial ridge with surrounding grooves. As in many titanosauriforms, the astragalus of Diamandinosaurus is less than 1.5 times as wide as long, and the proximal surface is divided into the ascending process and the fossa for the tibia. There is also a shallow fossa for the fibula on the outside face of the astragalus, giving the bone a subtriangular shape. No depressions or foramina are present at the anterior base of the ascending process, a condition typical of Eusauropoda. A process on the posterior side of the astragalar body is unique among all sauropods, making it an autopomorphy of Diamandinosaurus. Classification When it was originally described, Diamandinosaurus was assigned to Lithostrochan certicetus. In both phylogenies it was placed in, Diamandinosaurus was either just outside Saltisordae or the sister taxon of Episocelicaudia within the family. In a 2014 study, it was found that the genus was placed as a Lithostrochan in both large phylogenies, in a relatively derived position in Titanosauria. Their first phylogeny was modified from that of Carbadillo and Sander, 2014, the matrix being indirectly based on Wilson's 2002 phylogeny. In that cladogram, Diamandinosaurus was found to be sister taxon to Tapuiosaurus, their relationship outside of Saltisordae. In this phylogeny, the Bremer support for each group was at most one. Five features of the skeleton supported the placement of Diamandinosaurus and Lithostrotia. In the same study, the relationships using the Manion et al. 2013 matrix were tested. These resolved with Diamandinosaurus as a Saltosaurid, sister to Episocelicaudia, with Dongyangosaurus as the next closest. Two characters were found to support the placement of Diamandinosaurus and Lithostrotia, and a third could not be evaluated. Another phylogenetic analysis in 2016, partially reproduced below found it as a non-Lithostrotian titanosaur and the sister taxon of the contemporary Savannosaurus. The 2021 study recovered a similar topology, 
finding a close relationship with Savannosaurus as well as Sarmiantosaurus from the early late Cretaceous of Patagonia, which skull had similarities to the referred cranial material of Diamandinosaurus. The clade containing these taxa was dubbed Diamandinosauria. Paleobiology Growth In 2011, the smallest positively identified Titanosaur embryo was described. Although it was uncovered in Mongolia, the embryo shares the most features with Diamandinosaurus and Raptosaurus. The embryo, from a relatively spherical 87.07 to 91.1 mm, 3.428 to 3.587 in, egg, was identified as persisting to a lithostrotion. The embryo was slightly robust, intermediate between the robustness of Raptosaurus and Diamandinosaurus. The egg is part of an entire nesting site for a lithostrotion titanosaurus. Dating of the region also suggests that this egg predates those of Ocumwevo in Argentina, and the eggs were laid in the early Cretaceous. Paleoecology Diamandinosaurus was found about 60 kilometers, 37 miles, northwest of Winton, near Eldersley Station. It was recovered from the fossil-rich section of the Winton Formation, which can be dated to approximately 93 million years ago. Diamandinosaurus was found in a clay layer between sandstone layers, interpreted as an Oxbow Lake deposit. Also found at the site was Australovenator, which was directly associated with Diamandinosaurus, bivalves, fish, turtles, crocodilians, and various plants. The Winton formation had a faunal assemblage including bivalves, gastropods, insects, the lungfish Metaceratidus, turtles, the crocodilian Isisfordia, pterosaurs, and several types of dinosaurs, such as the aforementioned Australovenator, the sauropods Wintonotitan, Savannosaurus, and Ostrosaurus, and unnamed Ankylosaurians and Hypsilophodonts. Diamandinosaurus bones can be distinguished from other sauropods because of the overall robusticity as well as multiple specific features. Plants known from the formation include ferns, ginkgos, gymnosperms, and angiosperms.